My name is Tally Emanuel. I'm a pro-life student at Ryerson University in Toronto, Ontario. Freedom of expression is under threat on university campuses and especially at Ryerson University. I faced harassment and discrimination. I even been denied access to various services meant to combat discrimination simply because I share minority belief on abortion, a pro-life belief. Ryerson has two student unions, Ryerson Students Union or RSU and Continuing Education Student Association of Ryerson or CSER. The two student unions jointly operate several equity service centres which provide services for marginalised students on campus. In a rare stroke of irony, I've been discriminated against for being denied access to these centres, the very services meant to combat discrimination on campus, simply because I shared a wrong belief on abortion, a pro-life belief. I'm a woman, but I've been denied access to the Centre for Women and Trans People. I'm black, but I've been denied access to the Racialized Students Collective. I have type 1 diabetes, a disability recognized and accommodated for by my university, but the two student unions have denied me access to Rye Access, the equity service center meant to support students with disabilities on campus. As a survivor of sexual assault, the very student union employees entrusted with supporting survivors and protecting survivors deny me equal access to resources for healing. Receiving that email and reading thought it would not be appropriate for me to seek out healing alongside other survivors was one of the most difficult parts of my healing journey. This discrimination was especially cutting because it was coming from the very centres meant to combat the isolation that marginalised students feel on campus and meant to empower students with disabilities. When I began accessing Equity Centre events, I was asked to leave immediately upon entering the room. I was told that my mere presence was difficult and triggering. And I was told that other students felt unsafe by me being at these events, simply because elsewhere at Ryerson, I had shared an unpopular belief about abortion. As a Ryerson student, I believe I have the right to be treated the same as any other Ryerson student and to not be denied access to services that my student fees pay for just because I disagree with the student unions on the issue of abortion. Pro-life groups at Ryerson are ineligible even to apply for club status. However, the two student unions have a project called the Ryerson Reproductive Justice Collective or the RJC. The RJC exists primarily to shut down and silence pro-life speech on campus. My friends and I are always peaceful and law-abiding when we share a pro-life message at Ryerson. The RJC is neither. I've lost count of the number of times I've had to file complaints with the Ryerson Student Conduct Office, with Ryerson Security and with the Toronto Police regarding theft and destruction of property and harassment and even assault by members of the RJC, student union employees and volunteers. I tried to go to Ryerson University for protection, but to no avail. I've met with Ryerson Human Rights Services and even the president and provost of Ryerson University. They could offer me no meaningful protection from this harassment and discrimination. I filed this complaint with the Human Rights Tribunal of Ontario to seek the justice I was unable to get at Ryerson.